Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the film attorney, and my client has a case. Taco, bitch. Erotic films have never gotten much respect. Every now and then some movie acts all pretentious because Sharon Stone showed her cooter, the Joker humped Donnie Darko in a tent, and the Rush Limbaugh's and Fred Phelps's of the world get upset. You can't turn on the TV without seeing some jackass waving his privates. And then Hollywood gets to pretend it broke down barriers and changed the way the world thinks about such and such as such and such. As if it's impossible to see people do that for real. But back in the days of basic instinct, porn wasn't readily available. You had to go to the video store and in front of people picking out cartoons with their kids, walk behind some room that was behind a beaded curtain and for some reason always lit with a purple light bulb. Then bring your selection to the high school gal at the counter who will later charge you 50 cents for not rewinding. It took a special kind of guy to rent porn back in them days. Red! Red! People trying to preserve dignity rented films like Showgirls and Basic Instinct so they can at least pretend they're renting a real movie. Now nobody considered those movies to be masterpieces or even good. So the erotic film just kind of died for a while. But in 2015, Hollywood gave us a daring portrayal of people pretending to do something that once again we can all see for free on the internet. I'm talking of course about the critically ill-fated Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Because I think part of the appeal of this movie is that you watch it and you're like, Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a second, man. You're supposed to be the nostalgia chick. Hold on one minute. <clears throat> Excuse me, Sid? Yeah, what's up? Where is the nostalgia chick review of Fifty Shades of Grey? She didn't do a Fifty Shades of Grey review. Are you sure she didn't do one? Doug, I'm positive she didn't do a... You couldn't find one or you couldn't look. The goon's shaking his head. What is that? The gimp. Wh whatever. And no, she didn't do one. And why would she? She's the nostalgic chick. It's Fifty Shades of Grey's not a nostalgic movie. And you just assume it's in her wheelhouse because she's kind of a cunty feminist. Well, did you at least find a girl? I want to do a girl in this one. Nope, all I found was a bunch of dudes complaining about the feminist backlash on the movie, but other than that, no. Chicks seem to review the book. Nah, oh, hells. Hells. Oh shit, wait a minute. There is one, but uh, I didn't think she'd be. Yeah, bring it to me. Taco, bitch. Well, I guess it's fair that we hear from both genders, so go ahead, not nostalgia chick. I just want to say that I absolutely agree that the book is very problematic. I think that it completely misrepresents what BDSM is. Okay, now it's time to get into something that kind of bugs me. Why is it that characters in movies nowadays are expected to be the spokesperson for everyone in real life who engages in the fictional character's behavior? And by that standard, Movies like Die Hard and Lethal Weapon have been misrepresenting law enforcement since the beginning of film. Jim Brewer gives a very minstrel-esque performance of a pot smoker and half-baked. Pot don't make people act like this. Sniffing gas off a rag makes people act like this. In fact, half-baked is a horrible representation of pot. Marijuana doesn't make people float. But the humor is derived from its exaggeration. In the case of Christian Grey, who's a BDSM dominant, who takes this nonsense a little too far and can't have a normal relationship because of it. Now, if he's expected to be the PR man for the BDSM lifestyle, then the character could have no conflict, and hence he would have no story. The movie makes you think that the only person who's fucked up and sick in this is the guy. The problem is, is that I think the girl is equally as sick. No, Anastasia is intrigued. She's sexually inexperienced and has been sheltered all her life, so all of this is very foreign to her. 
his vagary about what she's getting into creates an element of danger, you know, that chicks love so much. And yeah, he wants to do all this weird stuff to her, but he leaves the choice to participate all up to her. It's important that you know you can leave at any time. We call it the Kevorkian approach. But this doesn't mean Anastasia's sick. I mean, he pitches this whole BDSM thing like he's about to take her out of the Matrix. How could she not be at least kind of interested? Besides, it's a girl's thing anyway. She better be glad this guy doesn't have actual man fetishes. This would have been a different film. You and your friends want me to do what with this? Come on, baby, it's my birthday. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking butter! And the guys are really excited. I will say, you know, I'll give it to them, but it was still, like, bad, and it's not a healthy relationship, and it's still abusive, but it wasn't as bad as the movie. Well, you don't really want to watch movies about people in healthy relationships because that would make it a boring movie. It's the dysfunction that makes it compelling. So those are my pros. Wait, that was your pros? And you want to know why she's interested in him? Three things. He's rich, he's good looking, and he stalks the shit out of her. A dominating presence is something women actually like. And in the case of Christian Grey, he applies his bizarre sexual practices to his courting ritual, which is not the best thing to do. But just as Anna is a virgin in the physical sense, Christian Grey is a virgin in the emotional sense. He's never had to date before. As you see, Anna's been through the dating process. She just never gives any up. <laughs> just ask this guy. No, Jose, I don't... I'm sorry. No. Dude, no. She said no. You were such a super lady. One of the things with this Christian Grey character is that we're conditioned by other movies to hate his guts. Christian Grey has that character profile that every wormy rich guy behind the supervillain has. Christian Grey is not the underdog. And like trained monkeys, we can't muster up any sympathy for him. We're too used to some tough-as-nails good guy throwing him out of a window, or him getting a career-killing case of diarrhea. Or at the very least, falling face-first in a cape. Sheesh! And being able to have a romantic plane ride on standby makes that whole stalker thing a little more romantic and whimsical. It's annoying to you because you can't do it. But to her, it's like getting stalked by Peter Pan. And her reaction to Mrs. Robinson, like, yes, she is a child molester. You do not get a teenage boy who's 16 years old and make him your submissive. That is not, that's, that's, that is not acceptable in any realm. All right, hang on, wait a second. First off, those rules do not apply to a teenage boy. All right, when a sexy teacher has sex with a 15-year-old student, he won the lottery. He's getting something he wants anyway. And a young man can learn a thing or two from a dirty old lady. Now, if this were Mr. Robinson and a 15-year-old girl, while this may sound like a double standard, and maybe it kind of is, in the best case scenario, Mr. Robinson's just an idiot who let a teenage girl seduce him. I'll give you ten dollars if you let me look at your tits. Mr. Greenfield! Or he's this guy. But the in-betweens are all creepy and they do psychological and emotional damage to young women. And they end up in movies like Showgirls. And she just like kept joking about it. Like, oh, it's Mrs. Robinson. Oh yeah, she's a child abuser. I don't like her. Ugh. Had you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? In the movie, this is where Christian Grey has acquired his appetite for BDSM. But his sociopathic approach to relationship is really his own shortcoming. But it's also why he's a billionaire. You don't get wealthy by caring about people, that's for dang sure. She actually tells him, I'm a, I'm a virgin, I've, I've never, you know. And she actually says, like, I, I just never found the right guy. When he finds out, he says, oh, well, let me rectify the situation. As if saying that waiting to have intercourse is some type of flaw. All right, calm down there, promise ring Pete. This girl's like 22 years old. If she puts it off any longer, she's going to end up like stalker Patty. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, starting off light, there was one scene where Anna was going over the contract, because you need a fucking contract, you can't just go into it being like, I'm going to accept your consent, and we'll talk about it before we get into it, and uh, if you use your safe word, I'm just gonna stop. No, instead it's like, this is legally binding. You have to, you have to do it, because you signed. Like, ridiculous. Well, he also says that his lawyer insists on the contract. I'm afraid my lawyer insists on it. I guess this is in case some gal left his apartment claiming to have gotten the Bateman treatment. 
But if Christian Gray just worked in a lumber yard, he wouldn't need a contract. He'd just be lucky to find somebody that wanted to participate in this nonsense. The thing is, she never signs the contract and she gets her ass beat anyway. So that contract is completely fucking pointless. No, the contract is actually symbolic of something, which is the emotional wall that exists between him and his usual sexual partners. But Anastasia's different. She dominates him emotionally, which causes him to break his own rules. Fuck the paperwork. Her never signing the contract is a symbol of his failure to have her in the capacity that he wants. I think one of the obviously more problematic scenes was when he was like abusing her and she was bent over the table and crying and he kept going. Like you can see how uncomfortable she is, you can see how she hates this. Like BDSM can include things like this, but then there's aftercare. There's like seeing that the person that you're doing this to is physically and emotionally uncomfortable and hurt by what you're doing to them. Well, she was kind of asking for it. Punish me. Show me how bad it can be. I want you to show me the worst. And yeah, she hated getting this butt with him, and it ultimately ended the relationship. But she never used the safe word. The worst relationship on the on the face of the planet, okay? Just just think about what that would look like in your head. Not a dysfunctional relationship, but the worst possible human relationship. Alright? Multiply that by a million. You done that? Okay. You're still not even close to understanding how shitty this relationship is. Well, not really. I mean, she has a boring relationship that ends boringly. Besides that, this movie is not supposed to be a dating guide. Once again, Christian Grey is not there to represent every BDSM dom on the planet. He's there to represent Christian Grey. He doesn't have to be the Billy Mays for whatever he's into in this movie. According to Westerns, everyone in the 1800s was just drinking whiskey and shooting each other. Anyone with half a brain knows that ain't true, otherwise we wouldn't have a society. We tell the stories about the ones who shoot each other because those stories are interesting. Who cares about the guy that started the first textile factory? Unless, of course, he shot someone. This is abuse, and that is not okay. Fifty Shades of Grey does show BDSM being enjoyable, with a big emphasis put on her consent. Also another point of the contract in this film, and that's Fifty Shades of Grey. It's overrated in its provocativeness as well as its critical backlash. Its worst sin, really, is that it's just kind of dull. However, you get to see this pretty gal naked for a collective 30 minutes of the film. I would hope, certainly, you're not complaining about this. Shell is everything that's wrong with our society. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? I'm the film attorney, and for now, the defense rests. I'm never get so crazy right now.